Hello everybody, this is Jonathan and in this video I'm going to be talking about Calibri OS and how guys should be able to install it. So this is more of an introduction to the operating system. So as you guys can see, Calibri OS is a tiny yet incredible powerful and fast operating system. So this basically means that the operating system is really really great and it's really really fast uh, whenever trying to boot up to the operating system. It should only take about 5 seconds to boot up. So yeah, and you can open up applications a lot faster as well. The power requires only a few megabytes of disk space, so I don't need to have much um, storage space on the system at all. On the hard drive, it could be a solid state drive, I don't need much storage. So I could just go grab a 200 gigabyte storage um, of storage of a hard drive, or it could be a solid state drive, and it will just run fine. And it only require 8 megabytes of RAM to run. So if you only have like 2 gigabytes of RAM, then that should be definitely fine to be able to run this operating system. Um, so obviously it has some applications that um, is built in and other features, not just applications. Um, but it has like a word processor, it has a miniature, it has a graphical editor, and it also has a web browser. And it has over 30 games that you guys will be able to play around with with this operating system. The most um, exciting game that there is is Flappy Bird that they have created. Um, and this operating system is free and open source, obviously, because I only talk about open source here, as open source gives everyone freedom and the right to the source code. But yeah, this is basically what this operating system is all about. If you guys want to learn more about it, I'll leave the, um, the website down in the description if you guys want to learn more about more advanced stuff about this operating system. But this operating system is meant to be a replacement of Windows, or it could be Linux or whatever, and it's meant to be a lot faster, and it only requires a small amount of storage speed to run. Now this is a great thing. Now I'm going to show you guys how to download it in a minute. I just want to go through this video right now. So basically this video, as you guys can see on the website, um, talks more about the operating system, how to use some of the applications, how to basically interact with the system. I'm going to make a playlist of this um, of this operating system, so it's going to go more in depth, more and more in depth than what he's doing in this video. But this gives you a great introduction on what you could do with operating system, as you guys can see. So big shout out to that guy. Okay, let's go in now install for operating system. I'll show you guys how to install it with um, installing it to a USB drive, so be able to boot up on your main system. To the operating system, I'm also going to show you guys how to install it with using VMware. Click on to download. From download, click on to live CD image. Click on to English, and that should basically start downloading. But I already got it installed, so I don't need to worry about that. Now I'm going to open up Photobox, and then from here, I'll be able to create a new Photobox by clicking onto the new button. From there, I can now give it a name. So I will just call it for right name, which is Cobrius OS. If I do say the name wrong, I'm sorry, okay? I just not very good at pronouncing it. <laughs> um, yeah, that should be fine. I'm gonna call this one number two because I did a test. Um, and I'm gonna give this one other OS, um, no, that's not right, other, um, other unknown 64 bit. Click on to next. And now give it how much RAM we want. As you guys have saw previously, um, we only require 8 megabytes of RAM to run. So I don't need to give it a huge amount, but I will give it around more than 64 megabytes. By giving it around um, that much RAM is fine. Now click on to next and create a photo hard disk now. We don't really need to worry about that, it's just going to be running through, a, um, through the ISO file. Or it could be just from running from a, from a USB drive. But I'll create it anyway, it's in a later series, um, in a later video. I'll show you guys how to actually install it onto a hard drive, which is a little bit more difficult, so I'm not going to go through this in this video. Now I'll give it how much um, storage space we want, um, but we don't need to give it a huge amount. I'll give it around 10 gigabytes, should be fine. Click, click on to create. Once I've done that, click on to settings, Click onto storage and then click onto the empty. From there, we'll be attaching the ISO file. Now, click onto the CD, click on to choose a disk file. Now, click onto the ISO file that you have downloaded. 
which should be clubbery uh, dot iso double click onto it click onto ok and now click onto the start button once i've done that it should now start booting up and we should see a screen like this press on for enter key and now for operating now for operating system it should now be booted up if you guys want to start messing around with it i'm just going to show you guys a fire quick introduction to this operating system so obviously it's a bit more like windows click onto the menu and from the menu we can click onto what application we guys want to open up so it goes into categories you can click onto 2d demos you can click onto 3d demos you can click onto graphics we can click onto multimedia development which is more programming and system and data processing network and other and we can also go to a game center and from the game center we can click onto what game we want to play so for example i can click onto the game called um what is a good game to click on to um, i'm just going to click onto a random game called pong and then from here be able to play with a computer the pong game isn't this awesome and the computer is not doing so well <laughs> no, so am i not <laughs> we both are struggling Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. I didn't know what you could do that with the space bar. But yeah, this is basically how guys should be able to interact with the system. And then we can click on these applications on here to be able to use them. I'm just going to power off, power off on this system because I'm not using it right now. And now we're just going to click onto power off the machine and that should basically just power off for me. So that's how guys should be able to install it with um, Photobox. If you guys are now wondering how do I use Etcher, I did a video about it. So if you guys want to watch that video, I'm just going to leave it um, as basically as an application that you guys should see above. Um, but basically, this is Etcher. Um, so basically, from here, we just select which ISO file I want. So once I've selected the, um, the operating system ISO, then now we need to select which um, drive you want to save it to. So just select your USB drive. And then once you have selected which USB drive you want to save it to, click onto the flash button and that should start flashing it. Once it is completed, and it should tell you if it's completed, just, com just power off the computer, then turn it back on and go to the BIOS and then tell the BIOS to boot up to the, um, to the USB drive. I won't be able to show you guys because each computer is different on how it will be able to enter the BIOS and each BIOS um, is different from one of, the, one of each other. But if you guys, um, but it should be very easy to be able to boot up to an hour drive anyway um, from the um, boot um, section of the BIOS and just select a US, um, USB drive they want to boot up to. So that's how you guys be able to use Etcher. If you guys want to learn more in depth how to use it, I will leave um, a basically a card as you should call it, but I call it a notification. So there should be a notification on how you guys should be able to use Etcher in a lot more um, better way. So anyway guys, if you like this video, please put a like and please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one on my next video on how to use the file manager in the Cobbery OS. Bye bye.